Hi, welcome to the Jeff and Jerry Show. My name is Jeff. I'm the borough manager of Mount Pleasant. And my co-host... Jerry Lucia, mayor of Mount Pleasant. Jerry, this location I think you've been to many times. Oh, yes, my yeah. goodness. It's, it's a pleasure to come <laughs> Well, <here>. especially <laughs> uh, our guest. I'm sure that's why you come here. <laughs> when you say I'm going to go to the doctors and it takes you five hours, now I know why. <laughs> if you're sick... If you're sick and you come to on your office appointment, you don't have to worry that you'll be sick when you leave. And it's because she makes you laugh. She <laughs> makes you feel like you're, well, you're she, not sick anymore. If she keeps you going, she's doing yeah. a fabulous job. That should be a testament in her ability as a doctor. Uh, I think she's the greatest. Uh, she really... Uh, Jerry's a good guy. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to say that. We're going. Jerry goes way back, though, way back. But, but, you know, I go back to her father. Mm -hmm. You know, and and her father and we were friends years ago. You know, when I lived in Scottsdale. Yeah. And uh, and then when she came along and we put two and two together. And we're gonna get our recipes well, together one day. Yeah. We're gonna get those recipes well, together. Well, he signed the HIPAA form, so you can talk about his health. <laughs> Oh, you want? He okayed it. I'd rather talk about the Italian food and the old days. Huh? <laughs> yeah, but the, the reason I wanted to do the show, you know, uh, with the, the doctor is she's a go-getter, and uh, whenever we had the COVID, she was uh, right out front to make sure people got shots. And well, you should she'll introduce explain her. All you that. should introduce her because well, this is your chance, Doctor Esposito. <laughs> She is uh, a Connorsville native. Yeah, Bay County. Uh, mm -hmm. She was the head of her class, and um, he finished see, first I get, or second. I got that second. Second. Mm-hmm. Then you were tied with Corey. He finished second. He was third. He was mm -hmm. uh, uh, third or fourth, uh, I think. Uh, uh, I think. Uh, uh, I think. I'd have to go back. Second, so I'm gonna have to go back. <laughs> But, uh, you know, she comes from a super family. Your mother was a nurse for how many years? Oh, gosh. I would say at least 30. At least 30 more. At Frick. Mm-hmm. At Frick. Pretty much the whole time when she and got out of nursing school. And she went with school. Dr. Bonkachi. Mm-hmm. And then she worked for me when I had my own practice at Bessemer. And uh -huh. then she became um, babysitter and then retired after that. <laughs> yeah. So at least 30, maybe 35. So you're Dr. Esposito. Yes. Your maiden name, though, you're from Connorsville. So yeah, what? Fasten. Mm -hmm. Fasten. Mm -hmm. And your parents grew. Uh, were they originally from Connorsville, or did they move? Into yeah, my dad grew up down the street from where they live now in Connellsville. So he born and raised there. He actually he was born in that house that you know was right down the street, and mm -hmm. then he would come over to Scottsdale and play with his cousins. And then Jerry was part of that crowd, <laughs> and then, uh, right. part of that crowd that the cousins hung out with. And then yeah. my mother, though, was actually from Owensdale, yeah. um, and she went to South Moreland, and then um, went to nursing school in Latrobe. What was mom's maiden name? Marchuka. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like I said, she was a nurse at Frick for many years. So Mount Pleasant wasn't a, uh, you know foreign place you know to for you, me for uh, even though it was from Mom, fake yeah, yeah fake county but yeah we like being in mount pleasant so what happened um i don't know if you want me to talk about my background but sure. when when i when i got out of residency when i moved away went to college residency the everything uh where'd you go to college at? i went to washington jefferson and i actually majored in um french and chemistry in their um in their pre-med program and then I went to school at the Philadelphia College of Osteopathic Medicine. And then I did my training up in Beaver, up in Heritage Valley. Um, which was a really nice uh, family medicine program because we were the only residents. So that, that hospital was a large community hospital where we were able to see a lot of inpatient run you know run the codes we would um, see babies you know deliver babies yeah. see babies do the whole thing and then I came back in 2005 I was owned by Highlands Hospital for two years and at that time they pretty much just you know got you on your feet we I had my practice then we wanted to kind of keep it in that Scottsdale Mount Pleasant area because of 
where I was locating uh, located then in um, with the Scottsdale address, mm-hmm. and um, I didn't want to move you know back that way so much because i loved my my scottdale mount pleasant patient so we got a place up at the bessemer building um and then it was at that point it was getting to be a lot of bookkeeping for my uh my husband to do that on the side so i went in with dr uh, lynn and boshay's group uh when dr kaminsky left we formed main street medical and then they became hospitalists i think the first hospitalist at frick hospital and I was pretty much the one that remained there, and Excella took over from 2011 um, then on. Of course, now they're at Frick now with that practice. And then in 2017, I decided to um, go back into private practice, but I wanted to keep, um, you know, this is where mainly my patients were from, so I kept that, uh, you know, to try to get a Mount Pleasant location. We like being, and we love being in Mount Pleasant. And then it was, Recently, because that's why everyone's asking me, why did we open a new office in Connellsville? And we have a second office. I'm here probably a little bit more than I am in Connellsville, but um, we were running out of, of space here. So between the parking and the exam rooms, if I'm here with particularly two physician extenders, but sometimes even just with me and one extender and then our lab schedule with blood pressure checks, we even with renting space over there we were mm-hmm. we were running out of room so i said let's go back home where a lot of my patients have followed and um that's what led us to open up that second location now we have sub leasers leasers in both locations so the building's being utilized you know even when we're not there but you also you you had a lot of clientele from Yes, they just kind of stayed now with you, me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, yeah, so they were real excited. It's convenient for, to come for back. them. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it was more of a convenience for the patients just Beautiful to go where they're at. Too. Thank you. Yeah, my husband yeah. put a, a lot of time and effort yeah. into that. So next, maybe next show, one day we could do down there. Sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so you have brothers and sisters? I have one brother. He's six years younger than me, Jonathan. Okay. He was in no, the medicine too? no, he's he's the um, the does thi- the, the things that I, I'm I'm not good at. Um, he does computer work. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, then you mm-hmm. can hire him mm-hmm. to help. You. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we need we need lots of help with the Jerry just oh, those computers. It. Yeah, because when I went to school, we you know we didn't have, um, you know we didn't have. Huh? We had a little bit of, of computer things, but all paper charts, yeah. paper notes, yeah. and by the time I was done, we were looking up results on the computer but that's a whole other you know um <laughs> part of medicine that, that we had to learn we had to learn quickly i have to tell you one thing about the doctor when you leave her office it's not that i'll see you the next visit you know maybe three months from now she'll call if she gives you a prescription she'll call and see how how you are Maybe several days later. It's that personal touch. Yeah. 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 Thanks. Thanks, Sherry. Well, and you gotta you gotta um, attribute a lot. I'm very blessed with the the staff that well, I have. Your staff, my goodness. So we work. We no one's nobody's perfect, and I think in the medical world, especially these days, it's very hard to uh, you strive for perfection, but you know, with changing. Jeez, everything you know the insurance yeah. companies and um just laws and then of, of course pandemic and protocols and how that could throw off my girls um always you know strive to you know you, you to put that patient first and and you you kind of try to um you, you try to improve on it every every time we meet so that was that was one thing when i came here to, to have the staff meetings to at least two times a month with staff and then meeting just because of the yeah. communication so many changing things and what are we doing now how to call but these girls have great ideas all the time that calling the patient thinking about that patient yeah. overnight or your girls uh they have your personality your, your personality wore off on them so <laughs> that's good or bad they're, they're, well, that's good. <laughs> so they watch this and say oh my god they're, they're, they're all happy go lucky 
But you have to be because this is a huge, I mean, when you start looking at uh, um, burnout and um, it's the medical profession is uh, pretty much yeah. at the top. So you have to try to keep things, um, you know, interesting and going. But I mean, it's, it's, it's been tough, but they've, um, and we also try to do, you know, um, party, you know, with the staff, staff yeah. parties and, mm -hmm. and get togethers and we celebrate birthdays and, um, well, yeah, that that leads to what we've did, what you did whenever we were giving shots, and uh, you didn't come out as uh, by yourself. Mm -hmm. You came out with your staff. Oh yeah, so and so tell, tell yeah. Tell the audience what, what you have to and do. And what there. happened? And I don't I don't really think that you know the the public truly had an understanding of of what was going on, but. Back in December, when the state said, hey, if you'd like to give the COVID vaccine, apply. So put everything in online. And then my staff, we had to undergo training to make sure we properly stored and handle, you know, administer the vaccine, all kinds of, of things we did. And then there was a question, um, and the state said, if pretty much this is a public health you know, um, this is a public health issue. Are you willing, and we're going to recommend this, that you vaccinate um, anyone, anyone that came to your office in that category that we're in at the time? Well, at the time, I thought, you know, why would someone come to my office? <laughs> yeah. Like, they don't randomly come to my office for a flu shot. My patients get their flu shots here. So I said, okay, not knowing the... Um, the amount of vaccine, the, the the need, there was more of a demand um, than than what was actually out there. So, and that's when I th the the new somehow the news knew they know a lot of information, but they said, "Hey, why are you the only one in Westmoreland County? You got a hundred shots, okay?" So I had probably twenty five hundred to three thousand patients. I would say at least, I mean, the vast majority, and you know our area, elderly, yeah. um, you know, like you said, a lot of retired people, and sickly, too, a lot were 1A. So out of, let's say, maybe 2,000, so they give me 100 shots. Why, you know, the news said, why did you get, out of all these doctors, you were the only, I said, I don't know. Um, so <laughs> probably because maybe I, the only one that signed you up should. at the time to put up with this, you or were the you know, rookie. yeah, I I don't know. So then it's like, probably what are you gonna? Reputation. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, because of because of Jerry. So I go, what are we gonna do with these hundred? I can't possibly start it at A and work my way down. I mean, we we did think about our patients on oxygen, the really really you know. Um, sickly uh, patients that were trying to think, okay, did you get your shot? So we said, you know what? And to me, this is how a public vaccination clinic should be. It should, you know, just like it is right now today, it, it's a walk-in clinic. So um, we were worried in the winter how we were going to direct traffic out here and how many people were going to show up at the time where everyone wanted it. And Jerry said, ah, you know, I think we're fine. We'll, you know, have the, the firemen help. So when we got the shots and they were delayed because of the storm, you know, in Kentucky, although yeah. my print, my updates were saying delivered at 10 a.m., well, you know, it wasn't delivered. As soon as we got them, it was Friday at 4 o'clock, I said, can we give them out tomorrow? You know, where can, and Jerry said, you can come to the fire station. Um, so we, we posted that, you know, first, you know, we have a hundred. Here's a hundred. First hundred people in line. Go ahead and get the shot. So, but believe it or not, I had nine, at least nine staff between staff, and I had a couple. Um, I had some nurses that were um, nurse practitioner students. They vol uh, they volunteered, and um, and then you know on their time came to that fire station, and uh, I thought we, I thought they did really well. Except for the first time ever doing it. For them to be organized to, okay, this station here, this station. And what we did was, and you got to remember social distancing, yeah. right? So, mm -hmm. and masks, you don't want any liability. So we had the chairs six feet apart, as many as we could get in the fire station. I bought timers so that I could control the crowd. So as soon as you sat down, you did your paperwork, got your vaccine, and we timed you for 15 minutes. So you didn't have people going up and walking around talking yeah. to people. So everyone was sitting raising their hands so my girls would come to them 
hey, that was a workout for everyone, too, because uh-uh. I tell you what, my legs were tired at the end of the day. Yes, but um, for those girls, just to say, okay, and you can remember, um, Taylor was uh, pregnant at the time. Yeah. She's, you know, eight months pregnant, and... Um, uh, but uh, unfortunately, well, then you're a slave driver. Yeah, maybe that's what it, I, I am, and my girls will attest to that. But, but that was the end of the vaccine. So the, that's when the state came out and said, "We think, you know, the pharmacies will do better, a better job getting it out to people, um, and we're going to stop giving it to physician offices." Which, you know, I have a lot of comments about that. However, at this point, we. We do have it now because there's a surplus. Everyone right. who got their, it seems like they're back. Although, you know, we're, we're encouraging people to get the vaccine. That they're coming in. But um, I tell you what, though. You talk about, you know, the Mount Pleasant community. After that at the fire hall and just from what people saw and um, Facebook, I had generous people, random people that I didn't even know say you can use our venue you know there were churches um uh, the ymca um if you have more shots and it that's what the shame was because we felt that we did a good job we were able if you told me let's set up a couple clinics a week my staff and i would would come down so we had um uh very uh, really good people in the community i had one lady say i'll make hot cocoa no for the patients yeah. waiting in line um volunteers for uh, people um, volunteer to say if, if there's something non-medical that we can help with honest to god like it gives you chills that yeah. just the community and um uh which that was uh it just was just very very nice just uh just to show that how much of support you have here well then you did one at the church you got yeah so those mm-hmm. were the second vaccines Mm -hmm. those were a little bit easier because we know who you are we're going to call you up and we're going to call these 100 people and then we're going to have you come back to the church of god and then um your poor wife got sucked into volunteering (laughs) then she's wiping off clipboards and helping people (laughs) she was the runner (laughs) i said how'd you get involved thanks so much Cheyenne, for volunteering i have to to tell everyone you know hello (laughs) diane's take your seat wiping down everything and that was a bigger place which i mean a little bit more walking but um yeah so re- very nice and um a lot, a lot of people from the community that that weren't my patients just calling you know asking if they could help mm-hmm. but a question now that mentioning that that way did you have any new patients come to you from that group i I think so. I mean, I usually ask patients, how do you, how did you find out about me? Um, and honestly, throughout the, you know, 15 some years I've been in practice, I haven't done um, too much, you know, advertising because yeah. it's just, it, it's word, it's of, word mouth. of mouth. Yeah. And it's usually my, you know, sister, whoever, friend. But there were a couple people after that that said, um, I saw you at the church or, you know, I, I, I met you at the church of God or at the fire station. And, that's, and that's, I was I was one of those it, fire station and, people. And that wasn't <laughs> your goal to get no, more customers no, and no, more patients. No, it was. It was your goal how, to get the shot How out. can we help? Yeah. And I think, uh, like I said, if they would have given us 2,000 vaccines, I know Mount Pleasant, Scott Dale, Connell, whoever would have, you know. Would have got it. And I got to tell you, there were people there that day from... Uniontown, mm-hmm. you know, people came when they knew that shop was there, you know, there, and, you know, with part of Pennsylvania, it doesn't matter where you live, but, um, but yeah, but it was just, um, my girls, I think the other thing was with my staff was we saw a lot of, um, sad things last year mm-hmm. and even mild cases of COVID where we would say, supportive care you know quarantine rest fluids if you get short of breath you're gonna have to go to the er there's nothing that we could do so i think after a while you start there's nothing that we can to to do about it now inpatient you know and i would i follow the guidelines all along what can we do as an outpatient what can we do inpatient obviously there are antibodies and different treatments but i think that probably gets to you after a while and then when you find something that, where you know that you can make a change to help somebody I, I think that's why the girls were um, very enthusiastic and you know um, 
with the with the second round that was that that was volunteering their time yes. for the second for yeah. the second time around um so yeah very very blessed i have good good hearted um good hearted staff some of us go back but um you know it's it's you're it's hard to find good people like that Jeff had a question. Uh, we see a trophy up there with yeah. number one on it. Well, I want to grab that you trophy. Have, you, you have to explain that to us. Well, and I don't know. You know, if this is like regular uh, TV for, shows that I'm allowed, am I allowed to say um, the you actual say what, name of the you company, like branded you names? Say. You know how they bleep you out on. <laughs> oh no, they <laughs> can't bleep nobody out. <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this, okay? Go, so. Go, yeah. um, so people and patients may or may not know. So the awards, it says Esposito Medical Associates 2020 asked Doc about this trophy. And so we have it in our waiting room. But um, the way the, and you know, I exist because of insurance companies and, and payments. Mm -hmm. And um, on, this, is, this is how we survive. You know, this is how, you know, we, we survive here. And a lot of people don't know they uh, a lot of times give you like a, a base fee rate and now the whole thing is this quality now define quality so i think we all have different ideas of what quality medical care would be but a, a lot of insurance companies do have a lot of um uh, uh, agreement with some of the measures how are you reminding your patients about cancer screenings are you trying to keep them out of the er are you making sure they take their medications are you trying to give um, the, the best kind of medications for their conditions, reminding their diabetics about eye exams. So in, it takes a long time for them to calculate numbers and how they, they judge you. But So one of the big insurance companies of our area in 2019 um, told me in 2020 that I was their number one um, uh, doctor practice in their 87 practices that he has for that company and their Medicare plan. And I said, oh my gosh, I said, that's wonderful. You know, my girls work hard every day for that with the coding and what we're doing and, and paying staff to constantly work on this. So I said, can you give me an award or something in the in the waiting room? And they said, oh no, we can't, we can't post that name. We can't use our company's name. Um, we're not allowed. So then, of course, um, COVID happened, and um, we found out just recently this year, we also won the, we were the top practice in this 87 for primary care practices in the Medicare population in 2020, so two years in a row. Same thing, I said, you know, it's kind of a running joke. I said, where's the award? Um, we can't do this. So one day, about two months ago, I opened up the box, something came in the mail, anonymous, open up this box and this trophy was in it you weren't scared so, of bombs no, <laughs> you have to wonder what it was and so i knew what it was the three reps who are wonderful people who work for that company um you know no it was, it was hard work and i think they felt badly that they they couldn't show anything so they got together they used joe's old football trophy that he got <laughs> Superstar. He's cleaning out his house. I guess he's moving. And then they got together with that little um, the plaque. But I was very touched by that, and I'm very proud. Unfortunately, only um, one patient asked me what that was. Was it, was it Jerry? No, no, it was, it was a, a nice, it nice family from, from Mount Pleasant. Um, an older lady, very nice, and she asked me about it. So that you know, I had a take. See, when I come in the office for my visits, you I probably go, go right, right back. I go right back. You don't have to wait in the waiting room. I heard. I go right back, and they come does, in. Does start she to... pick you up at the house too? No, they... no, he doesn't do that. No. Sort of... She go out for coffee one day, Jerry. You should do coffee, and then then come in and be the first patient. So. Well, this, no, I'll tell you, this is an honor, though. Oh well, it thank is. you. Yeah, well well eighty-seven deserved. practices. Well yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, this was, uh, you know, eighty-seven primary care practices. West so Lafayette. after a while. You can just keep changing the uh, thing every year. Right, now. you can put just little years on. <laughs> yeah, so you said two years in a row. Yeah, so they should put for 19 and 20 on there. Yeah. I'll have to let them know that yeah. from, from that company. Well, 
I'm sure you deserve it. Just think, it. when you retire like 60 years from now, <laughs> there might be a lot of those trophies, as long as Joe still has uh, trophies. Yeah. You can mm -hmm. have more than one. You never know. You guys will have to come back and check in on that. Oh, you we know, will. You know, to check. We will. Well, listen, we, we're about out of time, believe it or not. Oh, my gosh. We've yeah. <laughs> what, 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 what made you want to be a doctor real quick? Um, gosh, I don't even, I don't even know. Do you, think, <laughs> do you think female doctors have an advantage? I think I, a lot of people like to go to a female, though. Um, I think from a, maybe, uh, there there have been some studies about being a female and the um, customer satisfaction kind of thing, but I think the reason I, I went into medicine was I always like, um, you know, math and science, uh -huh. and then I figured I like people. Mm, you're a people <laughs> So person. we said, well, yeah. let's, let's try to help people, and that's... I, that's that's probably what it what it was and then I, I picked family medicine to kind of be the jack of all trades and see some kids I, and I always relate um, a female doctor to almost like a mother mm -hmm. I mean sometimes you're more sympathetic or I don't want to say male doctors aren't mm -hmm. but you come across that way mm -hmm. well yeah. yeah no I, I appreciate that but I think we have that um, you know that I don't want to say motherly kind of uh, but you know you worry about them you want to yeah. you want to yeah. take care of of your patients and you, you know i've been around a while and i've gone <laughs> to s several different doctors but i never uh had a doctor that would sit down and really have a smile on her face mm -hmm. and, yeah which you couldn't see this past year because of the mask but i i was <laughs> yeah, you you you're staffed. I mean, you know, you always send a couple of girls in to do mm -hmm. your blood work mm -hmm. and that. Mm -hmm. so, so they're, they're all good. Is he in good shape? Hey, hey Jerry's, Jerry's in great shape, you know. <laughs> well, and, and, uh, and not, I was going to say, he's... it's hard to forget patients like like Jerry, but, uh, well, you know. If, if there's something wrong, you have to tell the borough, because we have to know. <laughs> it's like your president of the borough. you got to know how he's doing. So, he took uh, my he... pulse and says, go four more years. There you go. <laughs> well, listen, I think we're about out of time. Oh, uh, thank you Jerry, so much. Jerry, any last so comments thank about you. the dog here? No, I'm just thank you. pleased yeah, yeah. to be the, she's my doctor. Yeah. Yeah. No, thank you for inviting us. Oh, well, yeah. well listen, Jerry, practice, Jerry yeah. wanted to make oh. sure he had your chance <laughs> I, to meet I you. I promised you I was going to do a show with you. That's wonderful. So he'll be ready for yes. his prostate exam later on today. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, maybe okay. Day. okay, well, we're going to film that. I want you to know. Yeah. That, that office visit, we'll film it. We'll have we'll, all my girls ready. We'll have, we'll get, we'll have it ready. Yeah, okay, yeah. well, then we're going to have an uh, appointment. Yeah, for we'll sure. Make sure you call them. For sure. Well, oh. I hope you enjoyed the show. Um, you are everything they, uh, Doc said, or oh. Jerry said you were. So uh, if you need a doctor in town in Mount Pleasant, Collinsville, <laughs> Scottsdale, She's, I'm sure she's taking new pace. Aww. So, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Jerry. Thanks, Doc. And we'll see you next Thank time you on the so Jeff much. and Jerry Show. Thank you.